Instagram. It is the Golden Artist Educators doing painting a day and telling you people it's hard. It's hard. Okay, so this was well last Monday was when I did this one. And I am not that thrilled with it, but you know what? I got it done and I've gotten a painting done every day. I'm going to share these with you, give little critiques at first, and then we'll go into something else. But I got a lot of good feedback from you as to why you all liked hearing me critique my own art. My issue with this particular piece is, first of all, I think it's lovely, but it looks like wallpaper to me. And um, there's nothing wrong with wallpaper. I like good wallpaper just like everybody else, but I prefer if my art has a composition and this to me doesn't have a composition. It does have other things I look for in art. It has value changes. It is pleasing to the eye. I think if it was hung on a wall, it might have encouraged people to walk closer and take a look, but it doesn't have a composition. So anyway, that was last Monday's and that's my opinion on that one. Tuesday, I'm gonna take these out of the way so you don't see them all underneath. Tuesday, I had a scrap piece of paper and I just was screwing around. And then I called this a piece of art. So I'm maybe a cheater. I don't know if this is a painting. That's actually a piece of collage on there. This is some watercolor, some little resist techniques. And I just was in a really, really bad mood on Tuesday. <laughs> Can you tell? But I thought this was really pretty. And I still like it. So there it is on a little piece of scrap paper. So, that was Tuesday. Wednesday, I got in the mood and I made a real piece of art. All right, so let's talk about this one. This is interesting, and I think it's a theme that you're going to see in the next few pieces. You know how I have always referred to myself as grid girl because I do like a good grid, right? Well, this is definitely a grid, Okay, you cannot deny that this is a grid type piece of art. Now, I have always criticized myself internally about grids because I felt like I should be doing something more. So here's the thing about grids. They're very pleasing to the eye. I like doing grids, but I strive to get on and off the grid. And I actually taught a class that was called On and Off the Grid. Now this, I was happy because I did go off the grid with these green bits here. There's something stuck on the top of this. I'm gonna have to touch that up. Um, anyway, this is some of Dina Wakely's paint in the spray bottle, that paint that, um, that spray that she makes. I have been pouring it on things and letting it dry and I really am digging the way it works. It gives a little different something something to the piece, like over here and even even came up here. And to me, it changes the grid. It changes it from a grid to something that is grid-like on the first layer but then on subsequent layers, it becomes a little bit more organic. And I like that in my work. And I'm gonna keep trying to achieve this as I go forward. Grid meets organic, see if it works, I don't know. This is actually an old paper I found uh, years ago and it has little dots in it. It's, um, it's actually textured when you feel it. I really like it a lot, I sort of, um, cherish it and I love it. Um, and then this, I am very interested in the actual the true physicality of the paint. So this is a big old glob of paint that I just stuck on there. And sometimes I make those globs of paint separately over on pieces of plastic and then I like peel them off and then glue them on. Anyway, I don't know, I'm just all whipped up about the physicality of paint. So this was the next one. It was on a wood panel, this one. And I'm gonna tell you guys, this went through some unbelievably ugly 
ugly stages, more than one ugly stage. I had to keep pushing myself because I was like, oh my God, seriously. But I ended up using tissue of another painting that I had made. So it, it's a very interesting revisit of, you know, uh, you know I make all of my own collage elements anyway, my parts as parts. And so this was kind of interesting to take the parts as parts idea and to turn an actual painting into tissue paper, but then use the tissue paper in a new painting. So it was fun and cool. And that was, that was a good day. The next day in this one over on Instagram, this one got a lot of love. I'm going to see if I can straighten out this paper a little bit more. I don't know if people just love blue or if they just love the painting or whatever, but this blue one got a lot of love over on Instagram. And this is one of those paintings that came really fast. These are the little paint swatches. This is one here that I cut off and these are some over here, but then this is something I painted to kind of look like one too. I just was in the mood to work with blue and I just threw a bunch of blue collage parts on my table and then started putting them together. This is a cyanotype um, part of a plant and a little blueprint piece. And then this is just a little dribble of paint on a piece of, I don't know, text, a text page. But this is why I save everything. I just love that idea of getting it all out and playing with it. I did use some stencil parts here. This is that stencil of mine that we gave away with the sale. Oh, this was Saturday. Now again, I think, I don't know that all these are gonna fit on here, but I think that you are starting to see how the grids are going organic, you know? So you can clear, I, for me anyway, I can clearly see the structure of the grids underneath these, but then I see them going organic, like this one, grid, 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 but then organic, organic, organic. And that was pretty, uh, pretty thrilling to me to do this, to, um, to have these going in these more organic directions. This is some amazing onion skin collage paper that I bought somewhere that I just adore. And look what it says here, as per year. And I just thought that was so cool. It's like legal phrase, as per your request. I was happy with that day. And this was um, a little collage part I had made. They're all always collage parts that I've made. And then finally, But what I really wanted you to see, and I'm quite fond of this one, are these parts here and here. These are deli paper. Remember back when we used to use deli before we got onto tissue? <laughs> I feel like I'm an oldster, right? I know there's a Ray Missigman there and up there, I know, plus some other stencil parts incorporated into these i couldn't even tell you which stencils they are though mary isn't that funny but um remember deli paper all right so i used to emboss deli paper and that's what this is this is embossed deli paper and i just love the way that looks here's a deli page that i painted and then i embossed on top of it and this is where I tore this piece off of this deli page. You can see my hand under it, so you can get an idea of the sheerness of it. And I really like how when you glue it down, it uh, you can just see a little bit of what's coming underneath it. It doesn't go down quite as sheer as tissue paper, but it's more robust than tissue paper too. So if you have found that tissue paper maybe rips a little too easy for you, 
then this would definitely be the thing to use because it's a really great product. I just had so much fun finding these in my stash and remembering how much I liked them. And it was particularly the embossing um, part that I liked because when you glue these on, the deli paper really does kind of blend into the background and the embossed part reads like it's texture. And that is so cool. This is probably one of my faves, but you know me, fluorescent pink, love, love, love. Thanks for yeah. watching. Stencil Girl would love to spark even more of your creativity with technique videos and more. Just click on the links below and you're all ready to stencil.